Welcome to my channel. My name is Jessica, if you are new here. So today I have a handful of new products that I've recently bought from the drugstore. I wanted to try, I figured I would try on camera. So I haven't really used any of these except for one of the products and we'll talk about that in a second. As I mentioned before, I try not to try too many products at one time just because it gets overwhelming. I mean, for I think you guys, if I were trying new stuff every single week, you'd be like, well, what does she actually use and like? And I think I'd be like, what do I actually use and like? This is kind of my way once a month to just try some new stuff that's out there. Sorry, my window's open and frankly, I'm loving it because the, there's like a little breeze, but there's all kinds of drugs going by. So I have already put on foundation, concealer, and brows just because I don't have anything new. If you're curious what I'm using, I'm using some of my favorites. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Dewy Foundation. That's all that's on my skin right now other than like SPF. And I just love the way it makes my skin look. I always do two layers of this. And then I also have on the L'Oreal H Perfect Radiant Concealer. And again, I think this looks really pretty. If you have super oily under eyes, I you wouldn't like it, but I think if you've got normal to dry, you'd really like it. And then for my brows, this is the only non-drugstore product I think I'm gonna use today. This is from Benefits, their Cabral in 3.5. It's just what I use every day. Just put a little bit of pomade in my brows. Okay, let's start with something I'm so excited to try. So many of you guys love. This is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. So I have it in the light pink shade. I was on e.l.f.'s website just a few minutes ago, kind of poking around, and they definitely have quite a few shades. So you can find one closer to your skin tone. I don't remember why I got the pink. I think I was picturing that I could use it for my under eye and just kind of brighten there, but I kind of also want to use it on my face to see. All right, so it's just got a classic little sifter that you can shut, and it actually says in the lid, pour powder here for a halo glow. So I'm gonna first start with setting my under eyes and just see how that looks and then I'll try it like in my T-zone. I have been using loose powder a lot more than I used to lately, really just because it does make a difference, especially if you're wearing masks. I do feel like it helps with the longevity, so let's just try it. Ooh. So it definitely flattened that area out. Let's get a little bit more on that side. That's the one thing I definitely like about finely milled powders like this. You can see a big difference, can't you see? Can't you see? So let's try it on this side. Yeah, it really does. Like actually, it's like flattening that area out. The way that my number seven, oh, this is a Charlotte Tilbury like expensive brush. And you know what? It sheds like crazy. I would not recommend. The more I've used this, the more I'm like, it just sheds like crazy. It definitely makes a difference. This L'Oreal concealer, like I have fine lines and every concealer kind of sinks into them. Some less than others. This one definitely does tend to sink in, but I noticed that when I wear it alone without setting it, it just kind of looks like, I feel like I look more youthful. Sorry, I'm struggling today, guys. So let's try some of this powder on like my T-zone because again, I've been using it that way a lot. This pink, let me just kind of get a little on my hand. and Yeah, it's, it's translucent. I mean, it's not like covering or anything, but I do feel like it can really smooth things out. You know what I mean? I think it looks a little powdery. Maybe I should go for one that's closer to my skin tone because even though there's not like a color color to it, you know, if I can get one a little closer, maybe it won't look quite as powdery. The one thing I will say when we're talking about like a drugstore price point, the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder is so good. I do have one that's close to my skin color and I'm thinking that's why I like it as much as I do. So I think I might think about repurchasing this, but at like I said, one that's closer to my actual tone. So we'll keep playing with that. I will do a speed reviews video in a month or two when I've been trying these for longer, as I always do, so you can actually get like a full on review. So I don't wanna get powder everywhere because I am gonna use a few cream products. Let's go ahead and do the rest of my face stuff. So one product I have had my eye on forever and I finally bit the bullet and bought it is from Flower Beauty. I bought it on Ulta's site and this is their Heat Wave Bronzing Essence. I wasn't really sure how to use it. It's like a bronzer, but it's a serum like consistency so when I looked it up on flower site it says you can mix it with like a foundation or something else to add it a little bit of bronzy glow to it um, I'm sure you can mix it with like a moisturizer if you wanted but you can also just use it on its own as a bronzer so here's what I'm thinking I want to do I'm gonna get a little bit of it it's in like a dropper bottle I think I'm gonna take a little bit on my hand kind of tap it in the areas I want it and then just kind of blend it and see what that looks like Maybe get a little bit more. I think that looks nice. It's like subtle, but it's there. Let's try a little bit over here. 
it's definitely subtle. My only fear is that it's taking away a little bit of the concealer that I'd place there, which obviously can happen with products like this when you're layering something like this on top. You tap a little bit up here. I typically put bronzer there. I think when I saw Drew Barrymore doing it, she was using her fingers. So let's try just kind of tapping it in with my finger. It's definitely a subtle bronze, which I don't mind. I like, I feel like it's pretty versatile. It seems like you can blend it with your fingers or a sponge and be fine. You could probably use a brush too. Although this is so thin that it might be tricky with a brush. I feel like it could be nice to mix into a foundation I already love because I'm not one that typically will buy foundations in darker shades for when I self tan. I probably should. I just don't, I don't know, I'm lazy. I just like try to match it with bronzer and move on. And I feel like this would be a good option that's not gonna totally change the tone of your foundation, but it's gonna add maybe a bronzy glow. It's looking a little patchy though, isn't it? I don't know, I'm gonna have to keep messing with this, y'all, because I think the only reason it's looking patchy is not necessarily the product itself, it's because it's moved the foundation underneath as well. So it's like a really bad combo. So I don't know, y'all, maybe it is just patchy itself because that is not looking cute. I gotta film another video. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of rehab and just at least add a little bit of uh, foundation in the areas where it looks the splotchiest just to even things out because I, I can't live like this, y'all. So all in all, I'm gonna play with it more. I'll have to update you. I think it's gonna be a trial and error thing and it could be that it really is best used mixed with something and not on its own because I did not love that on its own. I wanna try this Honest Beauty Cream Blush. People have recommended this to me for the past year. All I've done is swatched it, but I'm very intrigued. I picked it up at Target and it's in the shade Rose Pink. So the way I typically would apply a product like this is I would get just a dual fiber brush like this one. This is the Morphe M404. Elf sells an amazing one I use all the time. And I just tap it into there. I'm gonna see. Yeah, maybe tap a little bit off and then press it into the skin. Woo! That is pigmented. We are not having the best day when it comes. <laughs> but, and I even tapped some off, but it's blending in, I mean, really quickly with what foundation I had left. So that looks like a really nice blush. It didn't like move the makeup around, which I appreciate. So a little bit goes a long way. And this is press, I don't wanna say it's pressed hard in the pan, it's a cream, but it's not like crazy, crazy emollient which tells me it might actually last on the skin pretty long, which for a cream blush can sometimes be hard to find. And I feel like that looks really nice. It melded in really well with my skin. It's just giving that little like pinky glow. Okay, and that was fast, right? Like I am all about saving time. And if I can make my skin look youthful and a little bit blushed, that is gorgeous. So that is going straight to my bathroom where I get ready. I'll be using that this week. I really like the way that looks, awesome. All right, so I wanted to try a palette. I have a couple of options here. I have this new Milani palette, which is their most wanted palette in Burning Desire. One I have like swatched and messed with a little bit. I think this is the only one I'd previously like kind of tried and I did like it. The thing I've said about this previously is that it's a very thin formula. It's not to say these shadows aren't pigmented, they are, but it's just that they're really thin, which is just kind of interesting but they definitely pack a punch. They blend just fine into each other. So I might use this, but I also, and this is kind of a stretch because it's not, it's kind of drugstore. I have these eye effects palettes and I really wanted to use this one from Pixi called Hazelnut Haze. It just looks really pretty. The other one I have, I haven't swatched and I might donate, I might not even swatch, is this one in Rosette Ray. There are a couple shades that look really pretty to me, but I know I won't use most of them. So I'm like, I don't even wanna swatch it. I think I'd rather pass it on while it's brand new. So I am going to dive into this one in Hazelnut Haze. Actually, the formula of this feels very similar to the Milani one where it's like a thinner, formula, but it doesn't kick up as much powder as the Milani one does just when I swatch it. Not that you're necessarily putting it on that way anyway. So I'm gonna tap with my finger some of this like kind of golden bronzy shade just on the lid. Color palette wise, I don't think this is ever gonna be a palette I'm like reaching for every day, but there definitely seem to be a decent amount of colors in here that I like and would use. And I'm just someone that, I don't know, I just don't only, I only use a couple of shades, you know? And man, whew, if I can get away with using one shade for a look, I'm gonna do it because that's awesome and it just saves so much time. This applied really quickly and that's blending really nicely into the crease. Like, 
very easily. I thought it might take a minute, but that was like the fastest blend ever. This is totally like a one and done eyeshadow. Like I could, I could just wear that and throw some liner mascara and be happy. But I do want to play with, I want to try this one here. It's, yeah, it's like a matte, just a little bit deeper than my skin tone. So for me, it might be a nice kind of middle of the road, like crease shade to just kind of blend things together. Yeah. I definitely think Pixie is kind of a unique eyeshadow formula where they are really thin, and that's what I remember from previous palettes I've liked of theirs, but they blend easily and they still have pigment. So it's just kind of, it's nice, it's just unique. So that blended like a dream. Let's throw a little bit of this kind of light beige ivory shade just on the brow bone really quickly. Maybe let's try this middle shade just to jazz things up. It's kind of like a weird green but I kind of want to just see what it looks like tapped on the center of the lid. Not a green, but like a, it is kind of green, isn't it? In the center there. Just to do like a sloppy halo eye. If you're ever, if you're someone that's never tried like a halo eye, I'm not, I'm just, not, I'm not a makeup artist. But every once in a while, that's, that is something I like to do actually a lot, is grab a lighter shimmery shade and literally use my middle finger, sorry, tap it right on the center, and then just grab a fluffy brush and literally just blend the sides of it, and that's it. So if you've never tried it, that's a quick and dirty way to just do it and get a little bit of that shimmer in the center of your lid. I think it can look really pretty. All right, so we need some liner. This is one that I literally bought for the packaging, if I'm being completely honest. It's from L'Oreal, and it is their Le Liner Signature. And it says it's got ink-like color impact. It's supposed to be 24-hour wear. I think it even said, yeah, it's supposed to be waterproof, no skip, smudge resistant. Supposedly it's got it all, and it is a like mechanical retractable one. But look how pretty this packaging is. I love the like gold lid and like the matte black packaging with gold writing. I just think it's so pretty. You can actually, in the light, see through it, I'm now seeing. So you can see how much you have. Looks like it does not have a sharpener. So we're just gonna give it a try. Definitely nice and black, really nice and creamy, but it's not so creamy that you worry that it'll just kind of move around. Like it's creamy enough to apply quickly, but I feel like it's actually gonna stay in place pretty well. So I've been using this one from Maybelline I really like, and it's very, very similar. It's retractable. Packaging's not as cute, but <laughs> it's retractable, super black. Um, I think it's meant to be waterproof. The only thing is when I put a little bit of liner there on the inside, I, no matter what, get that smudging down there. So I always have to like take time to kind of get the excess off. So I'm very curious to see if this one smudges the way that one does, because if it doesn't, then I'm gonna be a convert because it drives me crazy. You know, once I wipe it, it's good to go for the rest of the day. And it really does stay in place all day, but yeah, that's just the one gripe I have about it. Pleasantly surprised, this applies just the same way as my other, as that Maybelline one does. I typically just do the tight line like I did there. I mean, I guess it's a little beyond the tight line, but that's pretty much it. Now, on most days, I go in with a liquid liner. I'm going to today because I want to. <laughs> and this is not new, this is just the Physician's Formula. Eye Booster Liquid Liner, it's waterproof, I love it. Um, I probably need to get a new one soon, but that is what I'll be using today. All right, so this is probably the, thing I'm the most excited to try. It's a new mascara from L'Oreal. This is their Air Volume Mega Mascara. Now listen, I have loved a lot of L'Oreal mascaras over the years. I've loved uh, the Lash Paradise. Their Voluminous is like the original OG one I used to love, but Lash Paradise is one I still use and love today. Their Bambi Eyes, I was surprised at how much I love. So I have very high hopes. It says that it's supposed to make your lashes like really volumized, but it's the reason they're calling it air volume is because it's supposed to be like super airy and lightweight, which kind of reminds me of like what the Lash Paradise does for me, but that mascara dries out so fast. Like I get a month and a half of use out of it and that's about it. So the packaging is really cute. It's got this metallic pink and then it's like flatter there, which is kind of fun. And then it's got more of a natural bristle wand, which I personally like. All right, so let's just give it a go. I'm like nervous. So it's adding nice volume right off the bat and it's keeping the lashes separated, which is big. I like them to be volumized, but I also, I don't want them to be in huge clumps either. Yeah, so one coat does look nice. Like it looks fluttery the way I like it to look. Not too over the top, but definitely like that was very quick and easy. And it's not nearly, it's not a super wet formula, which is nice. Cause like their Bambi eye is definitely more of a wet formula. And so it builds up quickly, but it's not as dry as the Lash Paradise. So if that's one you've tried that you feel like is super dry, 
there you go. I don't think that this necessarily adds much by way of length. Like I have been using lately the Hourglass, and now this is way more expensive, but the Hourglass Unlocked Mascara really does add a little bit of length to my lashes. This one I don't think is adding length necessarily, so if that's something you're looking for, this might not be the mascara for you. But it is definitely adding volume, and I'm adding a second coat to this side, and it's definitely packing it up but it is starting to clump like most mascaras do by this time. But it can definitely, I mean, I feel like it's kind of giving me that faux lash look, especially since I paired it with like a thicker liner on top. So just to kind of go through kind of my finalized thoughts on everything, I definitely do not like the Flower Beauty Bronzing Essence as like on its own. I'll play with it more, but I do want to try it mixed with something else to see if I like it better that way. So stay tuned for my update on that. I really enjoyed the Honest Beauty Cream Blush. I think it is so pretty. It looks so becoming on the skin and it was so fast and easy to apply. The e.l.f. powder, like I said, I want to try in a different shade. It's, it's really not helping with the creasing of that concealer. Usually with that, I can kind of press it in once or twice and it's fixed, but it just keeps creasing. So it could be that it's just not great with this concealer, which makes sense. This is a super hydrating concealer, so it can be a little trickier to work with. So I'll try it with some other things. I think the light pink shade, I'm just going to continue to use on my under eye and not necessarily for all over the face because I do think it looks a little powdery in some areas. The L'Oreal liner, I do really like. It works very well. I'll keep you posted on if I'm noticing the smudging that I take typically notice. And the mascara, I'm really enjoying. This is the kind of look, I just watched two cats fighting in the middle of the street. What is going on? <laughs> I thought it was a bird squawking. No, no, it was one cat yelling at another cat. That was crazy. So this mascara, totally up my alley. Excited to use it some more, but I feel like it really quickly volumized and it looks nice. It's holding the curl so far. I know I didn't use a lip product. I just wasn't, I didn't have anything new and I'm, on, I'm just wearing Aquaphor and it just feels really good on my lips right now. So I'm just gonna leave it be. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. I love doing these. If you would like to binge some of my recent drugstore makeup videos, I do have an entire playlist. You can watch plenty of them. So you can get your fix on drugstore makeup. I will have that linked in the eye and down below if you wanna watch more. And of course, I'd love if you subscribed and gave this video a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot here on YouTube and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.